welcome to Spam Filter for Your Brain, bite-sized ponderings on how our thoughts influence our behaviour and our lives, and because we're all connected, how our thoughts impact the world. I'm here to help people reconnect with their bodies and declutter their brains. And I don't believe that we should just magically know how our emotions and our thoughts impact our lives if no one ever teaches us. So let's learn this stuff together. Let's talk about boundaries. <laughs> it's such a thorny little beast of an issue, isn't it? I feel like just saying the word boundaries gets everybody sort of all pumped up and big shoulders and all about their fists like Rick it Ralph. <laughs> but actually, very rarely do we sit down and actually define what we think boundaries mean. Quite often we... I think the general sort of assumption is that boundaries mean that someone else has done something that I don't like and I feel a bit um, imposed upon. And one of the main problems with this definition of it is that everybody has their own definitions, their own rules, their own ideas as to what those things that you can and can't do are. So if you don't spend time trying to work out what your boundaries are and what your sort of definition of that is, it can get really murky in trying to work out how to keep yourself safe within your own boundaries. Now, I'm not going to go into too much about defining what boundaries are. I'm actually teaching a whole course on boundaries. Um, But the thing that I just want to look at in this podcast is the idea I think many, many of us have is that If someone does not cross your boundary threshold or if you try and assert a boundary and someone adheres to the the rule that you have set down, that you're going to change the way that you feel and someone else behaving in a particular way is going to allow you to feel a particular emotion. Now, firstly, that is hugely disempowering because you are waiting on someone else's behavior or lack of action to allow yourself an emotion. You're giving someone else power and sort of autonomy over your yourself, your feelings and your sense of peace in many respects. Um, but the other problem is with this idea is that changing your circumstances does not change how you feel about things. Now that can be quite a mind blowing concept. I think quite often we think we just need to fix things in order to feel better, but that doesn't quite work. And the reason that we can tell that that doesn't work is because you can have any set of circumstances and a whole number of people will feel a whole number of different ways about it. It is not the circumstance that causes your feeling. It is your thoughts that you are having about those circumstances that cause your emotions. So when we are looking at whether someone else does something or doesn't do something and and we are putting a whole load of pressure or hope on that being able to allow us to feel a particular way or feel a particular emotion. If we don't look at the thoughts that have been chugging alongside that, um, hopping on for the ride, then we take those same thoughts into the new circumstance. And how many times have you found yourself like the scenery has changed, the characters have changed, but yet we are still in the same plot line and it is the same old story. And the reason why we don't change the way that we feel about stuff is because we still continue to repeat similar thought patterns all along the journey. So when this comes to boundaries, the only way that we can change how we feel about what we want in our life, what we don't want in our life, the kind of rules of acceptability of things that we're going to allow near us, close to us, into our heart, into our homes, into our lives. All of those things come from your thoughts. It is not about the actions you either take to uphold those boundaries or whether other people take actions to respect those boundaries or not. The way that you feel about those things directly comes from the thoughts that you want to have. So what are the thoughts that you want to have about your boundaries? What are the thoughts that you want in your life in regards to this area? Getting those down on paper and identifying what your idea of boundaries are, what your idea of your values are, what your idea of safety is, 
These are the ways that you can cultivate the emotions and the feelings that you want in your life. I'm going to wrap up today because I'm going to have a coughing fit, but I hope that this has been a useful episode. If you're enjoying what you're hearing on the podcast here, I would love to invite you to self-care school. Self-care school is a membership site where we have group coaching calls every week. We have a whole load of courses that you can dip into for whatever suits your needs. We have courses on confidence, body image, um, timekeeping, how to manage big emotions, um, overwhelm, loads and loads of stuff in there. You can kind of pick out whatever you want to work on. There is a big library of workbooks, which includes journal prompts and questions for you to be able to apply this work to your own life. And we have the most amazing community where people support each other. We learn from each other and you get to work alongside people with quite often very different life situations to your own and we learn so much together in community if you would like some more of this please do hop over to selfcareschool.co.uk